record. Sure Welcome everyone to window. our Chaos Community Call, January 28, 2020. This is the last call before our big event, ChaosCon on Friday. So thank you for taking the time to join us today. Other, so here, let's share the meeting minutes in the chat. There, okay. Are there any topics anyone would like to make sure we put them on the agenda for today? A catch up from the last month, would that be decent? <laughs> yes. In short, uh, we had a lot of Christmas last month. And since then we have been very focused on the metric release. So I don't know that there was much else going on over the last month besides cleaning up metrics, getting them out the door. And then I know Kevin spent a lot of time just getting the release ready. Okay. So let's start with the closure of the metric release. Are there any outstanding issues? Has, has everyone on the call had a chance to look at the metric release on the website? I have not, but I will. Maybe we could just take a look at it real quick and uh, make any high level comments that uh, can be made. Maybe double check the release notes as well. Okay, I put the link to the page that Kevin is referring to in the meeting minutes. And then the release notes. I still need to update the PDF with release notes. Action item Georg, update PDF with release notes. So I've not done that yet. And then here are the I also posted in the Google Doc the link to the release notes or release history page. Were any changes made to the social currency metric system that I should be aware of? Anything that just didn't port over well or did it all go okay? Sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't quite hear you. Were there any changes to the social currency metric system that need my attention or did it all go okay? Uh, we reworded some of the sentence and restructured it a little bit in the last time. Okay. I'm not really as worried about verbiage at this point. I completely yeah. trust that your changes were made because they were important, so thank you. So the answer is no, we resolved all the issues. At some point we had a question and we emailed, I, I emailed you, but um, we got this resolved, so should be all good now. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. I've been pretty much absent because uh, I've just been at events pretty much every day this month. So yep, it's, it's been no crazy. worries. It's all good, it's all good. Hey, sorry if this was like discussed previously. Um, the, the naming of the release, because we have release 2020-01. Um, should we put like a dash between 2020 and 01? Because when I read it, it almost looks like a typo. Did we put a dash in the other release? We, we didn't, but that would be easy enough to, to change. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm, I think if it's easier to understand, I think is what Ray is saying. So yeah. we should make it easier to understand. That seems like a good principle to follow in this kind of thing. Yeah, I don't have a strong preference either way. It's just, I haven't done that in the past, so I've not seen us do it in the past. I mean, I would defer to raise expertise in people <laughs> and human, human factors of all this sort of stuff. No, I mean, it, it's just like, I don't like, I don't know why I didn't, I mean, we don't have to change it now. It's, it's just something we can think about for the future. Um, Cause like, I mean, I think internally we, we know what that number means, but I mean, for somebody that's coming in new, it might be, you know, what are all the, all these digits mean? So basically we want to have the year and the month of the release is basically what we're talking about. And I mean, just a suggestion, I mean, we, you know, don't make a change just beyond, based on my comment, we can have a broader discussion in the community and, and see if that makes sense. I, I'm completely fine leaving it alone, but just a comment. I guess I would worry. I think, uh, I, think I agree with him to an extent because we can follow a versioning uh, scheme. For example, either like the semantic versioning where we could just say like 20, 20.01 or dash one, but it should be consistent. We, uh, if we are doing it for this, we should go back and try to fix things to be, make it consistent. For readability, I, I, I agree with him, it's hard to read it. So the, the number there is, is basically just to provide a unique identifier. Uh, if we want to view it, if we want to view it as a date, I would suggest we actually use a date format. Uh, and I'm not sure 2020-01 is a standard date format. I could be wrong. Uh, it could look like the, the first release of 2020, for example, or uh, and the, uh, the 2019 one could look like the, the eighth release. Or just, my, just my thought there. But we can certainly, I'm certainly open to, to numbering it however you want to number it. So. International and um, as far as digital marketing and analytics nomenclature typically is dashes, not slashes, and year, month, day, time. Yeah. If we added anything, it would, in my opinion, also be a dash, just like Ray suggested, not a slash or anything else. Um, do we want Dashes to is also one? SEO better. So if, if it's just year and month, is that understood that it's year and month? Or in that format, does it always have to be year, month, day? You don't actually need any portion of the nomenclature as long as you're not skipping any. So you can stop at any point. You just can't have a middle portion missing. OK, that's helpful. So I recorded the ideas in the meeting minutes. And then we can take it to the community and discuss it. Yeah, I, I think we can just leave it alone for, for this release because it's just coming out in a few days, but future, uh, whether monthly meetings or even mailing list conversations that, that might yeah, be I mean, worthwhile talking to people it about. Is a, it is a very easy fix. Uh, and technically the release here isn't until the 31st, so. We do have time to make minor changes. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with making that change as well. Um, updating the PDF is easy enough. So I, I'm okay with either way changing it to include the dash or leaving it as is. I think we should just go ahead and uh, make the change. Okay. I don't think that this may necessarily require larger community input, but I'm also new to the community, so I wouldn't know. The nice thing about communities is the person who does the work gets to decide a lot of these small details. <laughs> so since we don't have a community decision beyond using the year and month, 
the format of it, it has not been decided by the board or anything as far as I remember. So we should be free to make that change. Other than that, I believe all of the issues in the working groups are complete. Sean, could you double check the release notes for uh, the risk release? I wrote them, so I assume they're good. So I added two lines. Oh, okay. I'm sure those two lines are fine, Kevin, but I, I'll look really quick. So it's in regards to the uh, license count metric and the software bill of materials metric. I'm looking right now. Is that, will I see that in the issue or is it somewhere else? Uh, in the, actually in the, uh, on the website, uh, okay. release notes, I can, I can share that. I, nope, I got it. I can sure I can find it. Go ahead while I look at that. So I'm looking through all of the working group issue trackers right now. Um, there's still one metric release candidate issue open about bill of materials in the risk working group. Yep, that's what we're talking about right now. So to, to get everyone up to speed on that, uh, the software bill of materials metric, which was released uh, on the last release. Oh yeah, we were gonna change the name of that, what we decided. Right. Yeah, so. It is being, it's being changed to the SPX document metric as far yep. as I know that is right uh, but that is not release being notes, released Kevin. Um, why wouldn't it be being released I mean I guess it's not a big deal but I why I don't want to I think we discussed in the meeting we don't want to unrelease metrics we've already released so the um, the SP the SPDX document metric was not on the uh, on the table for release but I think it's it's the same thing as software bill of materials. It's just a name change. So I, I think we, we don't want to unrelease software bill of materials and then not release the metric that replaces it. Okay, so are there I, structural, are there structural changes that need to happen on GitHub? I'll double check, but it was entirely just an, uh, a label change, not a fundamental change. Is the file change? Is there a, can you send me the release note link, Kevin? I'm not seeing it on the website. I have the, I, I put it into on the Slack. Super chat. All right. uh, I, I do have a Google Doc um, that we've been editing. I guess I never got put into a GitHub. Um, but that has all the new information on it. it, just needs to be put in. Yeah, I would just change that last line to software bill of materials was renamed to SPDX document. Um, and I'll look and see. So the, the XPA. The SPDX document metric did not go through the uh, the comment period. Yeah, I don't, know if that, I don't know if that matters. But neither did the removal of software bill of materials. Correct. So either we release software bill of materials because it was already released, or we change the name. But I don't think we, we nobody reviewed not <clears throat> nobody reviewed unreleasing a metric, and I think. I think that should be subject to the same review as releasing the metric. It was in the sense part of the review that we had the list of metrics in the spreadsheet and the SPDX metric was not marked for release and the bill of materials metric was entirely missing. So, and no yeah, one's- but I didn't, that. I didn't delete it. Like I wouldn't, I don't know how it got deleted from the spreadsheet, but the intention was never to, the intention of the working group was never to unrelease a metric and not replace it. And the topic of replacing software bill materials with SPDX metric came up pretty late in the review cycle, kind of as a tangent. So, I mean, and the reason we're reduced, we want to remove it is because that term is loaded in a number of industries. And so we want to avoid it being misconstrued, but. Um, no, I get it. I, 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 you know, I, I think, you know, my, 
I'm, you know, if we want to unrelease, if that easiest thing is to unrelease it, then so be it. But I don't think that's, I don't think we followed our process in this case. And I think unreleasing metrics is something that should be, like I, I go into this with the assumption that our released metrics aren't changing. And if we're going to change one, that, that should go through the review process. And this didn't. So I, I did, I created an issue for this, uh, I think last week. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm okay releasing it, but I need you to point me to the document that you yeah. want released. And yeah. uh, so I would need to actually just basically go through and change bill of materials where it says that to SPDX document. Point in the chat, we have a new version of that document for SPDX document. Um, with more updated data as well. Um, okay. it, it's it's in the chat. All right. So, what I think, I think the goal. All right. Um, let's unre. All right. Let's just unrelease it because we don't. I think there's consensus that we don't want the term out there because it's overloaded and confusing. Is it um, possible? And to then we can. And then if we're going to change it, then let's just release a new, a new metric. I, I just think it's confusing to people when we do this, so we should be careful about it in the future. Is it possible to just roll it back and include a landing page that suggests the changes that are proposed to be made, and then just use the same metric for the changes, and just call it a rollback instead of a non-release? So, so it's archived as part of the, uh, the 2019-08 release. Uh, however, the way we're doing it currently, we re-release all of the previous metrics. So the, the most up-to-date version of our metrics is the 2020-01 yeah. release. Mm -hmm. and, it sh and it has every chaos metric that has so is agreed upon, basically. So, so I'm a software engineer, and I think my, my reticence to unrelease a metric is sort of the the API contract that I make with other people when I'm building software. Like if I produce an API and people start using it, I have some obligation implicitly to continue providing that, that API. And when I release a new version of my software that breaks, and I don't know that this breaks anything, but it potentially, if anybody was actually building stuff off of this, um, it, it sort of breaks the contract that they can count on our metrics being there. And I think I think it's that risk in principle that I'm worried about, but I might be overthinking this as a software person. I completely agree from a marketing point of view. Like if people have decided that it's really cool and they really want that to work, then there's a level of transparency sh that should be added. So rolling back a landing page, but not necessarily removing the option to use it as is, uh, seems like a better option to me at least. So is this just a name change? Um, it looks like from what Matt um, Snell shared that there is a little bit more to it, but the, the little bit more is barely un, I would I characterize it as unlike, for example, when we're trying to decide, decide what a commit is, I think the language here is reasonably uncontroversial because essentially like the CII badging metric, it's simply a reference to another standard in the Linux community. Um, and it's it's putting clear language around uh, the software. The SPDX document is a more precise thing than a software bill of materials. So conceptually, it's the same. But what Matt shared um, is, is a completely different metric. I don't think, but the purpose is exactly the same. Like li literally, the purpose is exactly the same. Um, it's just, I would say, a more precise definition than what we had for software bill of materials, which makes sense because we're trying to narrow the scope. I, I might propose that we put together this SPDX. I guess if we want to release it now because we have a chaos con on Thursday, or Friday, rather, um, perhaps we can do a patch for this after that. So the official release date is the 31st. Mm -hmm. If you if you want the if you want the SPDX document to be part of that release, I think we could do that. Uh, what do others think? Am I making too much out of not removing a metric? 
I think we would need a quick review on it, though. I think we would we should reach out to everyone and and point them at the document because right. because it hasn't gone through the review review period. Okay. So I'm I'm perfectly okay with removing a metric as long as we indicate in the release notes that it has been removed and we can even indicate that it will come back as the SPDX document metric in a more refined version but that we didn't get it ready for this release. I, I believe that's what I have in the release notes currently. Um, could I say uh, just uh, throwing out a word, deprecating the current one in this release, as in indicate on it that it's going to be not used in the next release and there's a new one coming. Um, so that, that that's also inspired from you know how, how people handle APIs. Um, even when the new one comes in, you could keep the old one as a deprecated one, but I, not necessarily what we have to do here. But um, just removing it and saying it's been removed, um, you know that that continuity for someone who wanted a metric for that purpose uh, may be better off having it as a deprecated one that is about to be you know completely not used. So, uh, so they could basically release it with a deprecation warning and indicate the readme piece that says this will be replaced with the SPDX document metric. So my opinion is that this is a good idea, but to keep it simple, um, to keep the metrics really simple, I would still prefer just not having it in the release. So uh, can I ask a question? Um, so if it's not in the release, can someone still continue to use it from the past release? Like, what are the ergonomics of, of doing that? We won't unpublish the past release, so the document will still be available. Perfect. So, so is that right, Kevin? Yeah, that's correct. The, uh, the previous releases are, are archived and available, actually, on the release page. So uh, they're... Yeah. You can continue to use them based on those definitions. Perfect. So, so I, I mean, the removal notice would be this has been archived. It's it's no longer released. Um, um, you can get it in the archive, basically, if you if you are still using it. Um, so, so this way you don't you you keep it simple in the release, but you also give people just the thread they need if they insist they want to use it. Um, under the assumption that you know people do all sorts of things, you can't really predict every use case. Okay, so since we already are almost half the meeting, I'm sorry. Is there is there something actionable for me to do for for this? <laughs> Do I no. do I need to include it in the release? Do we, do we leave it the way it is? Uh, do we need to adjust the release note language? Um, can, I don't see the release notes. I mean, there it is, release history. So it it's on the I it's on the it website now, yeah. in the navigation. Yep. Yeah. I think it's okay as it is now. If there's consensus on that, I won't put up a fight. And then the same question with license count. Mm. License count? Yes, license count was removed because essentially it is a filter on licenses declared, but I don't believe, did we had we previously released license count? Yes. So okay. what I, yeah, okay, but this being, yeah, okay, that's pretty clear. That's, we're not breaking our contract because we're essentially making something that was its own metric a filter under a new metric. And that's, that's a different case entirely. Yep. I am going to put the SPDX document metric out for review and you all can decide what to do with it. Since I, I released it the 31st. Oh, you did. Snell, so far ahead. 
So, and then we have another um, open issue in the evolution working group, 292, release candidate comments, new contributors closing issues. Kevin, do you know if there was anything else we needed to do here? I'm sorry, can you give me the link? Uh, it's in the Google Doc 292 in the Evolution Working Group. I think the pull request for this got merged, didn't it? 297 is merged, yeah. Three days ago, so it's part of the release. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I think this is probably, I think we can probably mark that as part of the release and uh, close this. Okay, I'm closing the issue. Excellent. Okay, all other uh, working group issues have been closed. Uh, deprecating metrics was as a question. I feel like we already discussed this. Sean, if you keep me updated on the uh, the SPDX document metric, I can I can get that on the website pretty fast once the decision's made. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else on the metric release now? The only action item. So, Sean, you have the action item of SPDX documents still? Uh, yep. I'm going to send it around for review probably before this call is over. Okay. I will document that. Okay, I'm, I'm putting in here that unless someone, so, so Sean, you're sending it out to the mailing list, and then unless someone has a problem with it by Thursday, then we include it in the release. So. And I would, that can be left to community decision. I will make it available. And if there's controversy, then we don't release it. And if there's not, maybe we do. Yeah, so exactly. If there's I want to put us a, yeah, I'll just put us in a position where if we don't want to remove a metric, we don't have to. Assuming yeah. it's, everybody's okay with it. And if they're not, then we just put it in another review cycle. So I expect no pushback from anyone. I don't either, but you know, sometimes I'm surprised. <laughs> yes, I sometimes push back on things too. Uh, so as soon as the metric exists in GitHub, I think we can prepare the release just like we did for the other candidate metrics. Um, and I can update the PDF and that way we are prepared for the most likely scenario that it gets accepted. So Kevin, that was uh, for you. Action item, Kevin. Sorry, can you repeat that? I'm uh, 
I'm breaking up a little bit. I'm at I'm at the airport, so the my Wi-Fi is not great. I am adding your action item in the meeting minutes, Kevin, to update the release with the SPDX documents once uh, it is created. Okay, then we will move on metric release almost complete. <laughs> Almost. Matt had sent out, Matt uh, German Prey had sent out an email about mentorship that we are planning to participate in the outreach and the Google Summer of Code programs. So we need mentors and projects for both. And I saw on the um, mailing list that Valerio Valerio had already volunteered on mailing list. And so the encouragement here is to everyone, if you would like to mentor, if this is something you would consider, please let Matt or I know, Matt or me know. And we can work with you to figure out if this is something to do. I know Sean has been part of the mentor program last year and the year before. So if you want to say a word or two about um, the experience, Sean. Is this the Google Summer of Code mentorship? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, I've found it, and I think the folks at Paturgia have found it to be a really great experience, both for the students that we have working with us and for our projects. We had uh, two last summer, and they both developed uh, significant new functionality in Augur, uh, and I think had a really good experience doing something that was kind of uh, integrated into a brand new version of Augur, and uh, both of the students have contributed to Augur um, after that Google Summer of Code period, which has been great. Okay, thank you, yeah, Sean. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great experience. It, it, there is time commitment associated with it, but um, I think it's fantastic. I encourage anyone with, with a code-based project to consider it. Excellent. So I, I hope we find some mentors. I'll also advertise this during ChaosCon on Friday um, because we need for Google Summer of Code, um, basically Tuesday after, is it Tuesday or Wednesday? After Fosdom, we need to have the mentors in place and the projects defined. So anyone who wants to mentor for Google Summer of Code, we also need to put the project ideas together. There might be still some ideas we can recycle from the previous year, but that's something we need to discuss. And then for Google Summer of Code, we can have, depending on what Google decides, uh, probably two, a minimum again, maybe we can get up to four mentees if we have enough mentors <coughs> and Google awards us the <coughs> And then for outreach, we have one mentee for this year. And the difference here is that Google's are more code. Google pays the stipend, whereas with outreach, we have to pay it out of our own coffers. Yes, that's an important distinction. Matt had um, communicated with me regarding the um, DNI badging program being with outreach. And I think that's a great idea. Um, we've got a lot of development stuff that we could get some help with. Um, and I've only got one class this summer, or, or Sala has been helping with the project, so maybe he could be a mentor. I'm not sure. But it looks like a good idea, if uh, that's possible for the DNI badging program. Yeah, I was just actually typing the response to the email to say, uh, you know, I'm not yet far into badging, um, but, the, you know, I could learn enough. Uh, but the mentoring part, I'm trying to find the right way to say it. Um, I, I do see the value and 
like to actually be in a position where I can help someone learn the ropes. Um, I just didn't get there yet as well. So, you know, um, I wouldn't hesitate to do it. Uh, just uh, maybe a little bit of guidance on what, what it takes to get there. With that regard, I would like to add that if you two partner up, um, that would uh, be a good idea. That way you're not alone and you have someone to fall back to. And being a mentor also means you're learning alongside the mentee. So you don't have to be an expert. You just have to be willing to figure things out together with the mentee. That sounds good. Okay, um, so we'll continue the discussion on the mailing list. And then for the diversity and inclusion working group, I believe we will have a new time, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. US Central, starting two weeks after Boston, so February 12th. As another item, just to inform you, um, I paid for the lunch and coffee at ChaosCon and the reimbursement was approved by Matt. So that's money coming out of our account. Then for ChaosCon, there are a few things that we need to bring Matt and Kevin are bringing recording equipment, stickers, hats, t-shirts, chips, name tags, and markers. So thank you for bringing those. And Don is bringing pronoun stickers that we can use on our name tags. Um, anything else that we need to bring? Yeah, I plan on, I mean, our sponsors all bringing sort of their pop-up signs or uh, I'll probably have one available, but if nobody's doing it, I won't necessarily put them out, but. Um. You know, Baturgia usually does. Okay, yeah, I mean, just, just an FYI. I mean, the room kind of is small too, so if it's not appropriate, it's not needed, uh, but I'll probably have some GitLab swags that people can take as well. So, excellent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the that only other thing, like, I mean, e either via email, I'll arriving the day before. If you know, if you guys, if people need help, like earlier in the morning, like eight a.m., like Friday, just I mean, let people know and email. I'll be happy to s swing by earlier than eight thirty. Yep, sounds good. Yeah. I know. Well, I will stop by the hotel after Sustain Summit to make sure everything is in order. And then, um, yeah, we'll see. I'll send an email if I need anything. Signage, I left the office and I did not print any um, any schedule. I, I was thinking about printing out schedules and putting them up around the room and putting out up our ChaosCon hashtags around the room. Those are the two things that I like. Otherwise, I spoke with the hotel and they're going to put our logo up front on the screen. And anyone who comes into the hotel and asks for a meeting, there's only one meeting room that they have. So they cannot get lost if they're in the right hotel. Are there any other questions for chaos con planning? Any other good ideas for what we should do or need to remember to do? So look forward to seeing everyone. Yes, I look forward to seeing you all as well.
Likewise, seeing that you all continue to exist in the world is good. Yep. Well, then uh, safe travels, everyone. We'll close the meeting. All right. All right. See you guys. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.